Hello. In this lecture, we are going to talk about Paul Ricker. Born 1913 and lived up to 2005. So if you notice, he just died 15 years ago. Paul Ricker is one of the most distinguished French phenomenologists. He can be called phenomenologist. He can be called sometimes psychoanalyst, structuralist, and even a hermit. He made an impact in the 20th century philosophy. He began his philosophical career at a time when phenomenology and existentialism were influential in intellectual circles in Europe. As a student in Paris in the late 1930s, and subsequently as a prisoner of war in Germany during the Second World War, Ricker read the works of Husserl, Heidegger, Jaspers, and Marcel. In fact, he was a student of Gabriel Marcel himself, thereby establishing himself as a leading authority on phenomenology. Later, he became increasingly concerned with the problems of interpretation and developed through detailed inquiries into psychoanalysis and structuralism a distinct hermeneutical theory. In his later writings, Ricker explores the nature of metaphor and narrative, which are viewed as ways of creating new meanings in language. So as you notice, he was a versatile person. He has worked to reconcile various perspectives phenomenology, existentialism, hermeneutics, psychoanalysis, structuralism, narrative theory, and offered a new kind of mediating vision that is often set aside in pursuit of some single framework of inquiry. One of his recent books was on ethics and it was titled Oneself as Another. It manifests a kind of wide reflective equilibrium that is rarely to be found among the competing specialism of the present day philosophical debate. Briefly, I will explain to you the stages of long philosophical itinerary of Ricker. Ricker's death in May 2005 brings to a close the thinking of an author who has achieved a great deal in philosophy. Paying attention to his work and major themes which he explored can help us to structure his thought into four major stages. The first stage is the influences he had already from 1950. The second stage is when he focused on phenomenology for about 10 years between 1950 and 1960. And the third stage is when he began to focus on hermeneutics, which lasted for more than 30 years between 1960 and 1990. And in the final stage, he focused on what is known as the practical philosophy, the moral and political philosophies which lasted about 15 years, the end of his life, from 1990 to 2005. As you notice, the hermeneutic period is the largest period, both in the number of years and also equally in the number of publications. And then he spent about 15 years in practical philosophy, morality and politics. In this lecture, we shall focus on some of his important ideas. If you need to understand Ricker's idea, we need to probably begin with his famous work, The Symbolism of Evil. He discovers in The Symbolism of Evil a certain idea about finitude and culpability. 
This offers semantic potential for indirect language, which is characteristic of archaic mythical symbolic discourses. Hermeneutics is revealed as the empirical descriptive method necessary for analyzing symbols and myths in which are expressed multiple modalities of the problem of evil and guilt. By proceeding in this way, Ricker produces what he calls the grafting of hermeneutics onto phenomenology. Such a grafting implicitly bears a critique of the phenomenological method that fails to contemplate human reality in its totality because it marginalizes the sense expressed through symbolic forms and myths. This according to Ricker is a serious failing, especially if one takes into account that the subject does not know itself directly but only through the symbols deposited in its memory and its imaginary by the great cultures. Myths and symbols are understood as productions that refer, to a, refer us to a more fundamental language that is through and through symbolic. In order to under, understand this language, an interpretation of the symbol was needed. In other words, we need a group of rules that would help us to understand this more fundamental language. Therefore, by applying this hermeneutics, Ricker achieves two objectives. On the one hand, he is able to respect the specific character of the symbolic world. On the other hand, he manages to think not behind the symbol, but rather from the symbol. This is exactly what he has been trying to express when he gives the title Symbol gives rise to thought, rather symbol gives rise to thinking. In French it is beautifully said, le symbole se donne à penser. This is found in the epilogue of his book The Symbolism of Evil, where he indicates this brief formula, the orientation of the symbolic hermeneutics which he practices. Symbolic hermeneutics therefore recuperates the principal sacred symbols that modern humans have forgotten, but whose meaning is at the base of our language and our thought. As Ricker tells us, in, our, in this epoch our language becomes more precise more univocal, more technical, in a word, more apt for integral formalizations, which are called the symbolic logic. It is within this discursive epoch that we wish to place our language from which we propose to depart again towards a full language. However, it is not a matter only of recovering meanings lost in time. Symbol gives rise to thinking only to the degree in which we are able to add to it an interpretation that promotes a sense that goes beyond the symbol. And it is at this point we discovered that the symbol is not alien to philosophical reasoning, perhaps because it is found in the roots of our language. Thus, thanks to symbolic hermeneutics, what was once an incoherent and obscure discourse becomes a comprehensible discourse that eliminates for us not only an archaic cultural universe, but also parts of our own mode of existence in the present. According to these proposals, hermeneutics such as it is conceived in this initial stage fulfills several functions, among which at least four are important. The first function of hermeneutics is that the semantic recovery of the archaic, mythic or symbolic discourse. You recover the meaning of the symbolic discourses. The second function 
is the expansion and better organization of the spontaneous interpretations that symbols always cause. The third function is the defense of the philosophical dimension of primitive creativity that is expressed through symbols and myths. And the fourth function is the incorporation to philosophical discourse of the fundamental symbols of consciousness. The shift from an intrinsic reflection about symbols to a reflection that takes us beyond symbols takes us into a philosophical hermeneutics that is not limited to interpretative methodology. This is a similar orientation to the one that Gadamer also gives for hermeneutics in his famous book Truth and Method published in the year 1960. The symbol therefore is not only responsible for awakening Ricker's hermeneutic consciousness but also for expanding his purpose thanks to its ability to express a double meaning that takes us beyond. Ricker applies what he has learned through symbolic hermeneutics to other discursive modalities, noting that any discourse is susceptible to manifesting a double meaning that the interpreter should clarify through interpretation. The book that marks the beginning of this particular idea of thinking in Ricker is titled On Interpretation Essays on Freud and this was published in the year 1965. In this work, the concept of interpretation will be the central problem for two reasons. The first reason is because it is a key concept in Freud's psychoanalytic theory. The second reason is because Ricker's work is not constructed as psychology but as hermeneutics. Ricker carries out a series of reflections upon the title of one of the Freud's most important works on the interpretation of dreams. In order to confirm that hermeneutic relevancy of Freudian psychoanalysis, Freud does not speak of a science of dreams in a general way but of interpretation. Archaic symbols and symbols that are found in dreams share the same structure of double meaning that calls for interpretation. Our sensation before a symbol is one of finishing the opening of its signification, advancing from the literal meaning to another meaning in the second order. Dreams in the psychoanalytic context also produce the same sensation and generate a similar hermeneutic process. In fact, in his work on the interpretation of dreams, Freud positively appraises hermeneutic process. He also appraises the symbolic interpretation of dreams in order to get to know the most profound regions of the mind. The study of psychoanalytic interpretation reaffirms for Ricard his thesis that one must conceive of hermeneutic work as a function of the structures of double meaning at work. In the object of interpretation, interpreting symbols or dreams, what is brought up for examination by interpretative work is an intentional structure that does not consist of a relation between meaning and the thing, but rather on an architecture of meaning, in a relation between meaning and meaning, between the second meaning and the first meaning. It is this texture that makes interpretation possible, even if only the actual movement of interpretation makes it manifest. But just as one can say that the structure of the symbol sustains the structure of interpretation, one can also state that interpretation gives meaning to the symbol, constituting it linguistically. Effectively, thanks to interpretation, the problem of symbolism is inscribed in the larger problem of language. 
this is a conceptualization that will be reiterated in his work the conflict of interpretations published in 1969 thus initially the notion of interpretation remains united to the notion of symbol ricker expresses it in the following terms i quote him i call symbol every structure of signification in which direct primary literal meaning designates in addition another indirect secondary figurative meaning that cannot be understood except through the first this circumscription of the expressions of double meaning constitutes the hermeneutic field and code consistent with this conceptualization of the symbol ricker will define interpretation as the work of thought that involves deciphering the hidden meaning in the apparent meaning developing the levels of signification implied by the literal signification finally we must also bear in mind that the symbol has not only expressive value in the semantic sense but also a heuristic value by helping us in the understanding of ourselves and of the other a proposal that ricker will later apply to the notion of the text by stating that to understand is to understand oneself before the text with this i end this lecture in another lecture we will discuss about the interpretive conflict hermeneutics the shift he makes from here to the ontology of understanding thank you for your patient listening